Today I'm going to do a demonstration on how to string a badminton racket on a Clippermate M140 badminton stringing machine. Um, first thing is you want to secure one of the posts, make sure it is tight and it's not moving, to inside toward the center. And the other side, you release it so that it is free to move so you can adjust the post to the, the length of the head. After that is released, um, you mount one side of the badminton rack, one side of the badminton rack racket, and then make sure it touch the head here. There's no space. Then you move this head here back. I would suggest you to move on the base of the base of the post uh, with, uh, with your thumb push against the outside of the post. Uh, this way here, um, so it actually already has the angle and when you tie it up, and let me release the racket and you will see the reason. Uh, the reason is that, so there is no movement inward this way, so that when you string a racket the shape of the racket will not change. And once that's done, let me mount the racket. And uh, since uh, M140, it is a two-point mounting system. It is very easy once that has been once the post has been secured. You just all you need to do is mount it down very quick and no adjustment after that. Clipper may come with this styles of now they come with this style of clamps uh, which many people refer as high quad style. Um, it's longer, it's bigger, it's easy to open close. I would recommend you to get at least one of the Yonex badminton uh, flying clamp and the reason for that is it is wider here uh, so that when you string the cross it actually does not uh, cause the string to go in and out or you know that will reduce the um, tension loss after you are finished and I would like to thank Lazy Buddy from Badminton Central to come up with this stringing pin uh, the the starting pen that is provided by Clippermate is too big. It is it is designed for tennis racket. Uh, it will not go through. Oftentimes, it will not go through the grommet of the badminton racket. Um, in addition to that, is that um, if it does go through, it oftentimes damage the 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 grommet. Anyway, so that first thing you do is to clamp on the two center main here as you can see um, the drawback on the clipper made with the with the starting pin method is that you can uh, you can only pre-weave one side of the main you cannot pre-weave um, in fact if you're using a starting pin method you can only pre-weave one side of the main uh, as you can see here um, you insert the starting pin in the in the grommet or you know the in a based on the Yonex um, stringing pattern it is the B2 B2 which is on the uh, if you have the racket face you it is the left side of the of the racket B2 okay um, then after you insert the starting pin um, then you tension the B1 left string to the desired tension. Uh, this racket here, I am stringing at 24 by 26 and a half. Okay, and once the tension 
head has is level, you adjust it to level, then you, all you need to do it, I would recommend that you pull with some force on the starting pin or the, 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 the string so that it's tensioned a little bit. So when you release your tension head, um, this string here will not lose too much tension. Then once that's done, of course, um, sp spin it around. Then you're starting on, then you tension the right A, uh, right B1 string. Uh, what I will suggest you to do is that when you tension the right B1, um, leave the, leave the um, tension bar about 10 degrees higher. Uh, the reason for that is this tension here Right here, it is actually not at the 24, and uh, 24 right now is about 20, probably 20, 21 maybe, uh, because this this starting pin here does not hold too much tension. So, and also, uh, make sure you put your hand close to the tension bar just in case it dropped too, too much, which is it did. Uh, now it's dropped down to about five degrees below. Uh, so what I'm going to do is to, Clamp down to the middle. Now we just adjust the tension again so that tension bar is about five degrees higher and let it drop down to level. Now it is level, so we just clamp down and that's it. Then we go on to B2 on the right. And uh, sometimes it does drop a little bit, so do adjust accordingly. Okay, now it's even. Now what happens is that uh, you want to tension the the A1. I'm sorry, the, the the B1 on the left. So now you can actually release the clamp. And now I can pull out the starting pin, clamp in the middle. Now I can just starting, you can start stringing. Now I can start string. The B2 on the left. And once you get used to it, you will know how much um, grip and how much space you need to leave on the tension head so that it will just drop down and get to the level very easily. Yes, this is the only time you probably need the, the owl. Yes, just to move the string away. And uh, one more thing uh, is that I would suggest you to do is to have, um, for example, right now it's two on the left and one. I'm sorry, three on the left and one on the uh, and then two on the on the right. Um, with this, then you can actually start stringing uh, two string at a time, two right, two left. Uh, the reason for that is uh, you actually can. Um, this way, you actually only you will even out the low on the frame and uh, produce a very even stringing 
main, uh, even pattern on this on our main. And as you can see, the one with the pre-weave uh, main is very quite easy and quick. And one, one thing is that um, because the clamp down, the, the top and hold, bottom holding plate, uh, sometimes it is difficult to get the string through the grommet because you cannot see it very well. So that's one drawback. Uh, so you just have to be patient, patient with that. Uh, and uh, look a little bit harder. Like right now. And as you can see now, I'm stringing two on the left, two on the right, and then spin it around. And I do apologize that this is an instructional video, so there is no music to go with it. And another thing nice about the M140 is that um, it is a drop away machine, so it is constant pull. So that um, once it has reached the level, guess what? Um, it does not uh, drop tension right away like the crank machine. And also, it is since it's a drop away, it is a very very simple mechanism, so that there is no nothing to, you know. You, all you need to do is to make sure you keep the, the tension head clean so that it does not slip and uh, also that make sure your clamp is clean so that it will not slip too and uh, that will give you the best result uh, with the minimum tension lost. And I uh, just want to bring up one little pointer. Um, because the, the using because we are using the flying clamp, um, there is no way we can clamp on the main nine and the main eleven, and uh, still be able to weave and the tension the main ten. So in this case, you we weave the main eleven and the main ten, and then tension on the main ten only. 
Um, in this case, what I would suggest you to do is to increase the tension to the higher tension 10%, uh, which is um, the, the cross tension that we're going to set. Uh, with that, uh, actually, um, this is 26, this is about 24, okay? So release it again. Now, uh, I just earlier I just moved the the, t the weight, so now it's down 26. So, and here, make sure you pull a little bit, so there is minimum slack right here, okay? And once that's done, you tie it off. See, if you pull it out, there actually is still a little bit more t space here, so you pull out. Use your thumb, push it in. Now here, this string outside has minimum tension. You know, there's a, at least some tension, so you will not lose. Too, you will not lose too much tension after that's done. And uh, usually, th uh, two half knot should be sufficient to hold the tension. Once that's done, I would suggest you put this, pull this in, release the clamp that the string set in. And uh, now we are done with one more sniff. And yes, some of you, you may be very scared that I use a very big scissor, but I'm used to it, so it is actually not very dangerous to the string or the racket. You just have to get used to it. Again, now that's tension at 26 pounds. Again. Now, again, I'm pulling this tension, I'm pulling this string here so that there is minimum tension or minimum slack on the string outside. Then once that Done. And some of you may ask, well, why don't you uh, cut the string in half? Well, guess what? I should, but I don't. Why? Uh, because oftentimes I do not work on a pack of string. I cut off the string from a uh, reel. So uh, because of that, um, the string is actually a little bit shorter. Um, so if I cut in half, guess what? the cross might not be sufficient. So with this, uh, this way, I actually gain about eight to uh, nine inch to a foot of the string for the cross. Um, in fact, usually I was, uh, I'm able to string 23 rackets out of the one reel of EG65 string. Okay, once that's done, now we are done with the main. I will definitely, definitely uh, stress this is that you want to pinch in the string uh, so that the string is actually even out. Uh, all the string will be in about the same tension. Okay, as you can hear, the two string on the outside is very similar to the, with, uh, with their pitch. That's just a way to check it. Okay, here is a starting knot for the uh, with the Yonex uh, Yonex pattern. Um, you pull out enough string, and then you make double loop. What I usually do is use my pinky. Now I create a double loop here, and then insert the string through, and pull. Now I have a very secure knot here. Uh, even if it's sink, it will it will not get loose. Then you insert through. I uh, just want to show you a trick on how to string, um, how to weave the cross. Uh, first is that you pull out enough string here so that you actually can. Uh, you don't have to pull. Uh, you have enough to go through the cross. Then. What you do is push it down with your with your finger, 
The other one, push it up with, doesn't matter, middle finger or index finger, push it up. So it's a, above the, the next string, push down, up. And while you are doing that, move your finger across so that it actually, with a little bit string in the front, you, you let it pretty much let the string slide right through. And uh, when you pull the cross, uh, make sure you move your finger up and down uh, the main. The reason is that you do not want to have the string um, set in one place. It will actually cause a string burn and uh, reduce the life and the tension of the string. Uh, also, another trick I would like to show you is that um, many people use the uh, um, use actually use. Um, string mover to move this string uh, so it's easier to to go to the shear hole or some people use uh, L which is you know a little bit dangerous in some people's opinion but uh, that's just their opinion um, actually you don't need either one of them uh, what you need to do is use your thumb and if you don't have a thumb I'm sorry if I offended you but that's a joke anyway uh, what you need to do is push this string in and depending on the orientation, if you want to go up, um, if you want the string come out on top or you want the string out, come out on the bottom, uh, you, if you want the string come out on the top, you actually pull, pull in, pull down, push down. So now this side here actually create a little bit of space. Or in this case, I would like to come out from the bottom. So I pull up and I pull, pull push in and pull up so that I have a very, I have a more space down below to get my cross in. Just a second. Let's try that again. And also, one more thing I would like to suggest is that on the string, uh, you want to cut it in a diagonal direction. Uh, right now it's uncut, so it's a little bit difficult to get through. Uh, cut it in a diagonal direct direction so it is actually um, pointing sharp with the angle, and that will also help you to get the string through. Now just push, push in, pull up, and you can easily get it through. Sorry, I should have done that earlier. Now again, Now this time I want to go through the top just to demonstrate. Push in, in this way and down. And uh, oftentimes the string here will be, will block block the the whole the the string that's coming out. So use your index finger, pull it up, push down. Guess what? It is very easy. And then again, when you pull the string through, make sure you move your finger up and down so that you won't get a string burn. Or you can pull slowly like this. Now, usually the first tensioning is not going to be right, so you have to do it two or three times. Um, one thing I would like to uh, bring up or suggest to you is that uh, I like to leave the string on the tensioner. Uh, the reason is that in this case it is acting as pre-stretch. Uh, it's actually keeping this string here more than you know 10-15 seconds so that it's uh, it, it is pre-stretched so it do, does not lose tension as much and um, over time it, it reduces the tension tension loss uh, even if you are not using a racket. As you can see when I pull the string across I move it up and down clamp using the Yonex string, Yonex clamp, uh, if you, just a comparison, 
here is the Haikwa style clamp. Uh, actually, I don't need to do that next one. So you have more contrast on the pinching of the string. And make sure you adjust it so that it does not change too much. Okay, as you can see here, the Yonex string, uh, Yonex clamp, it only moves a little bit. Uh, let's see. Position. You can see here the the angle is much greater. Just want to reset so you can see it. So as you can see, it's much more. This clamp is actually narrower. So um, usually when you do that, um, it actually um, cause the tension, there will be some tension lost right after the after you're done stringing. And also, uh, some people ask, why don't you use two clamps, one on this side and one, one on this side. Um, the reason is that, um, that there is almost no tension loss uh, from my experience. So I will, you know, I will say, if you, you know, just want to get one Yonex clamp, you know, since it comes with two high class styles to clamp, um, you know, get at least one, you don't have to get two. And as you can see now, I pull up, pull, push in and pull it up. And it, I'm able to get it through. I'm sorry, my bag of racket just dropped. On the storage. And now, as you can see, it is very, very easy from here since it's not, we don't have any shear grommet. And make sure you, when you weave, make sure you check before you start tensioning because earlier I almost missed it you don't have to um, clamp up against the frame uh, but at least you know once not too far not too not in the middle but you know at least you know, maybe one string. Uh, the reason I didn't clamp it all the way up here is because uh, if I do, it might damage, you know, damage the paint on the, on the racket. So that's a, uh, that's a no-no. And some people like to pre uh, like to weave one string ahead. Um, in this case, um, if you feel that that is easier, do so. Um, if not, you know, in my case, really that's not a lot of a um, speed different. So that I just don't. And in, in addition to that, is this way here, I get the pre-stretched defects by leaving the string. Tension on the tension pad. And as you can see, even with the uh, Yonex clamp, uh, I still adjust and uh, make sure the string is even parallel, whichever you want to call it. Um, every time I, every other time I done uh, tensioning of the string. And many people ask, well, the flying clamp, as you can see earlier, it moves when it's tensioned and when the tension is released. Well, um, my, 
my thought on this has always been that if we are using a constant pull machine such as the M140 or any other electric with a constant pull, um, really uh, the next string when you pull, it will actually um, pull the, the string back as you can see earlier is that now this one is a little bit at the angle and then when I pull you actually see the clamp itself actually move back into position. So really um, my honest opinion is that um, if it's um, if you are using a clamp, uh, if I'm sorry, if you are using a crank machine, um, definitely you need to think of using two uh, two clamp one on each side to you know reduce the tension loss. But um, if you are using a consistent pull or constant pull or you know ten, you know drop weight machine, you know what? Really won't make too much difference. And also by just using one clamp, it actually does save you a little bit of time too. And uh, I was just wondering if anyone uh, really um, would like to time my next cross weave. Uh, the reason for that is that um, many people ask, well, you know, there, there might be a convenient tool or gadget uh, out there that can help you uh, weave the cross faster. Um, my thought on that is that their claim is a second. Uh, let's see how long it take for me to weave cross. Done. And if, last time I checked, it was about for my best time from. Um, from main 11 to main 11, it's about um, 9 seconds. Um, I thought we can do 8, but you know, I just don't think, is it really worth the pushing? No. And usually I'm a little bit faster than this when I string a racket because we have a camera today and uh, usually I don't do too well under the camera. Again, you push this one down and insert a string through. It is not difficult at all. But as you can see that the string itself is actually a bit tight. So that you probably want to you know, pull out as much string as you can before you start weaving. Uh, that way you will you know, the, reduce the string twist. And uh, however, uh, most of the time you cannot avoid that. Okay, so I just want to show you, push down and get your needle nose plier. Sorry, this one is a little bit 
not as easy to get through. And uh, since that is the case, we do have a little tool that I'd like to use. Um, it is called Dental Floss. What it is, is that it is the dental floss you can get from any drugstore. Um, you tie a knot at the end, okay? So now you got a hole, as you can see. Now all you need to do is insert the dental floss through the grommet. Now it becomes a leading string. And then make sure you hold the string and then pull. Now it is screwed. A little handy tool that I like to use. And also in this case that there is a little bit string twist, so I just pull the string through slowly. Some, uh, often times the string twist is un unavoidable, so it's just a fact of life. So, but just be careful, don't nick the string or don't let it, um, at the, um, don't let it stop at the end. Also, um, sorry, I did not explain earlier. Um, as you can see, the this string here is blocking the ground hole. Let me take that out. So what I do is that, again, thumb, pushing the string down so the garment hole is revealed or show. So it's easy to insert right through it. And then again, pull enough string and start weaving. And let's have some fun. And again, you know, make sure you check before you start weaving, which is I didn't. Now I did. So we are on the right track again. And uh, you can select which way you want it to go. I pull the string up or down to reveal the grommet hole. And this shear hole here is very easy because um, that's the way of the new Guaman system was designed. Only you, you only have to deal with very very sh few shear holes, so that's easy to string for most of the stringer. So you, you know, inserting through and etc. Oops. And again, um, just want to emphasize on, on the starting pin method, it is good for any of the stringing machine. Um, if you don't you know, have a fixed clamp, uh, with a fixed clamp you actually do not need a starting pin, so you actually can. Um, you actually can start without the, uh, you actually can pre-weave the entire main. Another thing is that um, many people ask, and a lot of stringer has, uh, like to pre-weave the entire racket, uh, so that all they need to, you know, when they have spare time, they pre-weave five, six racket, and entire racket. Um, my thought on that is, uh, I, I don't like to do that. Um, the reason for that is, one, um, the string, uh, the, the racket itself, um, actually the string, uh, due to the string, um, when you 
have the racket that's pre weed and entire way when you pull in the main uh, guess what you'll be rubbing up against the cross uh, that way you actually lose about almost um, a pound half a pound to a pound of tension at the the other side of the you know for example now you're tensioning on this side uh, th on this side of the of the string you actually if you pre-weave it um, I'm sorry if you tension on this side the I'm sorry take that back if you tensioning the main on this side the string on, at the end here is actually half pound lighter um, to a, half to a pound lighter depending on your machine condition so that's why I don't like to do that um, on a main um, second thing is that um, really um, so, um, pre weave um, without the um, without tensioning some people call it soft weave um, is not um, it actually doesn't save too much time uh, for me is that I actually can weave faster on hard weave which is when it's tension and the one last thing is that as you can see earlier um, because the holding plate here um, it is not as easy as for me to weave across on the main uh, there's there are a lot less space um, on this side here where the where the clamp is so that's another drawback um, unfortunately uh, that's just a um, not a design flaw but it just you can get away you cannot get away with it um, again uh, here's a tie off knot all I need to do is push in and insert the string through you don't need a string mover or anything like that and uh, my again uh, two half knot is more than sufficient to hold the string um, and as you can see that when I tension when I tie off the knot I actually pull in and pull this way up then move back to um, re to reduce the, the slack on the string outside okay now we are done as you can see the knot is sitting very secure on the tie off grommet and the last thing is snip and we are done And make sure you put your hand here because if you don't, it will flip. And one thing is that make sure you move the string out here so that you have more room here and here to remove the racket. And that concludes the instruction.